Hey everybody, I'm here in Ontario, Canada and I'm with Ray Outfitted. I figured while we got the chance to have a professional van builder talk on videos, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm hoping to make a series of videos with them over the next couple of weeks on my channel where we get a chance to sit down and talk about all the things that we've always wanted to know but from a professional instead of watching videos like me where we make these common mistakes that these guys see all the time so today in this video that's what we're gonna do he has a customer right here with a ProMaster van conversion behind us who has made some electrical mistakes so we're gonna take this over Ray's gonna take us through it and show us the problems that these guys did and what you guys should not do when installing electrical and how to do it right we're here today with a customer who did their own DIY electrical, and we're gonna take a look at it to see if there are any issues with it and how to correct it. Let's go to the back. So we're in the back of the van now. Uh, they've got a lot of Renogy components. Uh, we've got the Renogy Rover here. Uh, we've got two Battleborn batteries, we've got our Renogy 2000 watt inverter, and on the other side we have our DC to DC Renogy 40 amp controller. So we're going to start looking at the system from the beginning at the batteries. So here we've got a 4 gauge wire that is running from our batteries to the bus bar. But as you can see we've got two 2 gauge wires running from the bus bar to the inverter. So the main problem with this is that the wire running from the batteries to the bus bar isn't near large enough. You have to at least match your inverter wires. So uh, what we're going to be doing is changing this to a one aught wire between the battery and the bus bars so that we can actually have the proper amount of power traveling between and not worry about any choking of the wires and creating any extra heat and possible fire. The other main problem that we noticed on this one is off of the solar controller here, they have a load circuit. Uh, so a lot of people end up hooking their 12 volt system off of that, which is not what you're supposed to do. Uh, this 12 volt that comes out of the solar controller is mainly just meant for putting a light in a room near this controller. The reason for that is it's not really meant to carry a lot of power through it. It's a 40 amp solar controller. So it's only meant to handle up to 40 amps. If you've got your fridge running, you've got uh, your lights, your USB ports, all of this running off of it, this is a 100 amp fuse panel. So if you have 100 amps pulling through here, that controller is not going to like that. So what we're going to be doing is taking the wires from the 12 volt panel and running them to the bus bar. We're gonna put a fuse in line in case anything ever happens. And at least that way we know our circuit's fully protected. We've got a couple different wires here to give you guys perspective on size. So currently we've got a number four wire on there, which is the smallest one we have here. So when you're trying to carry over 200 amps through for your inverter to use, this doesn't really wanna carry a lot of power through it. So the size that we're recommending to put in this one is one on. So you can see the difference in size between those two wires. And what we're using here is welding wire. So it's very thin strands of copper all put together. So this wire is nice and flexible. You can put it wherever you want and it's gonna carry all the power through it. And then the other wire we have here is a four on. So you can see we're going from the one aught that we're recommending for this to the four aught. So this one is for mainly if you're running a 3000 watt inverter with a thick 6000 watt peak. You always want to gauge your wire for the peak of your inverter because you get the odd time you're running say your blender and you decide to plug in something else. Crap I'm way over the power that my inverter can do. So you have to be able to gauge for that because in that situation, if you end up doing that by accident and leave it running, you can burn your van down. So let's go with the correct size wire. You can always, there are a lot of wire calculators on the internet. Blue Seed has a really nice one. Uh, it follows marine, aviation, and RV standards. Gauge your wires properly, have it work properly, 
and you won't have any issues and it may cost you a little bit more for the bigger wire but it's always worth it in the long run uh, this wire is standard welding wire you can find it at usually napa welding shops harbor freight princess auto just take a look around find some welding wire find some automotive power wire and do it all correctly another common mistake that we see is for the dc to dc charging or alternator charging whether you use an isolator relay or one of these chargers uh, your line that runs from the charger to the front of the vehicle we usually see these unfused the problem with that is if it ever contacts the body, if when you're assembling your van, you accidentally put a screw through it, you're dead short to the body of the vehicle with this. So what you wanna do is have a fuse as close to the isolator or charger as you can, and one as close to the front battery as possible. And so this is a 40 amp charger, so we'd be putting a 50 amp fuse on this. The reason for that is you can get current spikes. So it's rated for 40 amps, but you might get a current spike of 45 amps. So you can get away with a 45 amp fuse, but we put a 50 on because when you get those spikes, you don't want your fuse to pop and then not have your alternator charging. Because this is such a huge thing in Canada, the Pacific Northwest, we don't see all the sun that California, Arizona, Florida, they all get a lot more sun than we do, so we utilize the alternator charging as much as possible. Go for a half hour, 40 minute drive, get your batteries mostly topped up, works excellent. So another common mistake that we see is with our solar controllers, where you have your power wire that comes in from your solar panels to your controller. A lot of people don't put fuses on this wire. You need a fuse on it for if you ever have to service them. You are not supposed to disconnect a solar panel while it's live. So by breaking the system, by taking your fuse out, you can actually service them and not damage the solar panels or the connectors on the panels. I don't know if any of this stuff made sense to any of you because if any of you were like me, it just kind of just, it's like noise that goes over my head. I don't understand this stuff. So my suggestion to you guys, if you're very much like me and this stuff just makes your mind go call people like Ray Outfitted to do the electrical stuff for you. It's your van, it's your home. When you're supposed to use a wire gauge this big, but yet you end up using something this big and you're trying to shove a massive amount of power through a wire that needs a big one, but you did it through this one and now you burn your van down, it's worth it to call a professional outfitter company like these guys. So if you are in the Ontario area, the links to all their stuff is down below. And I will try to link anything that Ray mentioned in this video today in the description as well too, like the, like the calculator thing, you guys can figure out which wires you need. But yeah, take your time, spend the money you need to spend and don't cheap out on stuff like this because come on, would you like to own a nice fancy home like that and burn it down because of a small simple mistake? Anyway guys, hopefully this one helped you. And if you have any questions, for Ray Outfit or any ideas for future videos you'd like to see me make with them, please leave them in the comments down here below and or if you have any questions for them, leave them down below as well. These guys also do consultations. Um, it's a paid consultation, but if you have any van questions like that, you wanna get on the phone with them, they are welcome and happy. They bring in those phone calls anytime. You have to pay for them, mind you, but sometimes to talk to a professional before you make a mistake is so worth it. All right, you guys, see you later. Thank you.